Now, so I'm going to sit back here. You can stay seated in the beginning. We're going to start with lifting the sky. So lace your fingers, turn your palms out, and inhale. Look up towards your hands, push up into the sky if you're holding up the sky. Take in a little more breath. And as you part your fingers and exhale, both bring your hands from the sky down to the earth. Good. Lace the fingers, inhale, lift to the sky. Push up high. Reach it up. Sip in some more breath in your whole body with that pure oxygen. And you're just lifting your arms as high as they'll go for you today. Part your hands and let them flow down to exhale. Once more, inhale, turn the palms out, and lift into the sky, push up through the heel of both hands, feel that stretch to the sides of your body. Part your fingers, exhale. And then we'll do a little bit of owl's wings. So this is to open up tension through the neck and shoulders. So you want to have your arms out like 10 stakes. You want to come close so you can see what I'm doing with my arms. We'll start first with open fingers. So stretch out. You can do this standing. So to avoid up and down, I'll just do it standing, but you can stay seated if you prefer. And you're going to squeeze your shoulders together. So if you're forward on your chair, just move your arms back and then down. Stretch down through the fingers, open them wide, and turn your head. So I'm just turning my head as far as is comfortable. Try to bring your chin parallel to your shoulder. Close your eyes or opening them wide. Look back as if you're trying to look all the way behind you. Stretch down and out through the fingers. And bring your head back to center. My mask won't stay up. I'm so sorry. And go the other direction. Stretching down to the fingers. Chin is parallel to the shoulders. Make sure that your shoulders don't try to sneak up on you. Put them down. Check in with your jaw. Make sure that you're not gritting your teeth. Feel free to open your mouth with the exhale. Bring your head back to center, release your hands, just let them rest to your side. Take a moment always to recognize the work you've done. So if you wanna close your eyes for a moment, it's a nice way to drift inward and just pay attention to how your body feels subtly different. Now we're going to resume the same arm positions, but this time the hand is going to be together and you're going to curl the little finger side up like you're cupping a little drop of rain in your palm. Okay, so the little finger rotates up. Arms are down and again, just for practice, squeeze in your shoulders. So squeeze them in together. Feel that openness in the front of your chest. Arms come down, cupping the little finger up. Turn one ear over top of your shoulder. Doesn't matter, we'll do both sides. Whatever arm is underneath your head, soften it. And concentrate on letting any tension drain across your shoulder and down your arm. Maybe even imagine it dripping out the end of your fingers. So 
to the arm opposite of where your head is. is one stretch. Now keeping your head heavy like a bowling ball, rotate the ear toward the front of the shoulder so you feel this rolling down the back of the shoulder blade. Start your teeth. Continue to keep your eyes closed so you're focusing on the sound of your exhale. And then gently bring the ear back over the shoulder. And roll the head toward the back of the shoulder. So you feel that lengthening in the front of the throat, the side of the neck. As you close, check in with your forehead. Make sure that you're not holding any dis-ease there. Focus on your exhale. Bring the forehead soft, the breath long and slow. Bring the ear back over the shoulder. Keeping your eyes closed, lift your head back to center, rest both arms. Again, with the eyes closed, check in for a moment. See how one side feels different than the other. Repeat, bringing the arms out like little stakes. Rotate the little finger side up. Move the shoulder blades back toward each other. Bring the arms back to your side and then tilt your head over the other shoulder. Parting the teeth, softening the arm, it's under the head. Reaching down and out through the opposite hand. The little finger rotated up, the breath soft. Long and slow and even. Feel free to open your mouth, letting go of any dis ease in the muscle. Gently roll your head toward the front of the shoulder, noticing the connection of the muscles from behind your head, across your shoulder and down into the shoulder blade. And your next exhale, let the head here drop over the top, keeping it heavy toward your body. And then gently lift the jaw toward the sky as the ear rolls toward the back of your shoulder. And feel the front of your throat start to lift up. So we're starting to open the lymph nodes through the neck. Gently bring the head back over the shoulder. Releasing the arm, bring your head back up, closing your eyes, two or three soft breaths. If you're feeling any tingling, that's natural. That is what we call chi or prana in the Indian traditions. In America, you might call it circulation. It's similar. We're working to promote that circulation through fascia, which is what gets constructed you know, dries up as we age, but also capillaries constrict when we're under stress. So we wanna get the blood flowing through all these areas. So if you're in a chair, we're gonna do shaking the tree. Remember, you don't have to stand for any of these. But if you're in a chair, you're just gonna be lifting and dropping your shoulders. So lift up and drop. Think of your arms as not being connected to your body. So they're just going to be doing their own thing. You can make a little sound if you would like. So if you're standing, 
We're doing the same thing. We're just adding a little bend to the knees. Please open your mouth with your exhale. Shaking the tree is good to slough the dead cells out of the organs and the tissues and into the bloodstream. So I'm opening my mouth with the exhale. And if you're able, you can flick the hands, but think more about the movement coming from the shoulders. The hands are going to be flicking simply because they're falling from the shoulders move. Keep your arms a little bit away from your body. And now we're going to move the branches of the tree. Again, your knees can still be bouncing. Sorry, my ass keeps flipping down. <laughs> Come up into the sky. <gasps> Do your concert wave. <laughs> Back to the side. Back to your side. And again, imagine there's an egg under your armpit that's to help keep the lymph nodes open. And do three more long exhales out through your mouth. Just make sure you're breathing. <laughs> and then we're going to gently slow it down. Bend your wrists so your palms are facing the floor. So again, I'm moving up just so you can see what I'm doing. So my hands are. Just level with the floor. All I've done is bend my wrist. And as you're standing quietly with your eyes closed, the palms facing the earth. Imagine the center of your palm is circling the top of a needle. It's a very tiny circle. It's coming from the shoulder, so it's all done without effort. If your palm was the center of a pendulum, gravity was gently moving. So someone that was looking at you may not even be able to see the movement it's so subtle. Tiny little circles. Gently try reversing those circles. Gonna let your fingertips turn up. And we're gonna bring our hands together in front of your chest. Bring them toward each other without touching. Get them up. You can also do this with your eyes closed. So you rotate your palms, pressing in. So if you were squishing. Nerf ball. And pet it. Feel that sense of connection, even though you're not touching the other palm. That electrical impulse that's there is what we're, what we're referring to when we talk about chi. And this is the energy that we're directing inward for our own healing. So as we begin to move through the other poses, when we take little breaks, if you're not feeling any tingling or you don't feel whatever you think you should be feeling, trust that it's there. Next, we're gonna be doing knocking on the door of life. So let's take our palms and we're gonna face them toward our abdomen for a moment. Just lay them on your abdomen, one hand over the other. Again, soft shoulders. You want to add a little circling. This helps to send that chi into where our life force energy is storing. 
stress is constantly chipping away at that life source energy. So when we're doing these practices, we're helping to restore it, to rebuild it. Feels nice on the abdomen too, with a little massage. Now we're going to let your arms hang and come into little fist. If you're in a chair, again, sit forward. It's easier if you don't have any arms on that chair, or you can just practice doing the front part of the body with one hand. So you're not going to swing the arms, you can just tap. And we're going to be tapping at the hip and below the ribs. If you can reach this high, if not, just anywhere in the general vicinity is, is fine. Remember, intention. <laughs> so our arms are going to be swinging because we're moving our hips. So you must bend your knees with this or, you know, do what you can. Maybe the whole body is going to be moving, but the hip comes forward. And that's why the shoulder's moving. So I'm not doing this with my arms. I'm letting the body move the arms. Because the arms and legs are accessories. Right? Everything that's important for us to be alive happens in the middle of the body. So I'm bending my knees and letting my hips come forward like I'm doing the bump. I have to be of a certain age to remember the bump dance. My hands are tapping. I'm tapping right at the front of the hip where white blood cells are made. And tomorrow we're going to tap in that area and at the lower back. Near the kidneys. And the tapping can be as slow or as fast, as hard or as soft as it feels right for you today. Okay. This is just a quick practice. Again, it can be done during the day. We're going to move up under the rib cage in the front. So we're tapping under the ribs and on the right side, stimulating the liver, and the left, the pancreas and spleen. We're gonna come up a little higher into the chest. So this is where you may wanna use just your little fingertips, tapping lightly wherever there's any area that doesn't feel comfortable. Let your arms be loose. Smile back if you lost it. Come back down, middle of the body. And back down toward the kidneys and hips. Slow it down a bit. Good, and again, turn your palms open to the side. If you need to sit down, feel free. Just take a seat, open your palms. They could even be resting on your legs if you're sitting. Put the smile back on your face if you've lost it. So we're gonna stay in the upper body for the next move, but you can certainly be sitting for this. We are gonna be serving tea, but we're gonna do three rounds in each direction of Phoenix washes his wings because it's a little more simple, I think, and it helps work the joints and we're opening up the space between the shoulders, which is the back of the heart. So I'll turn so you can see what I'm doing in the camera. <laughs> You're in front of me, you need to see what we're doing. So my hands come forward and my palms are gonna to touch. And I bring my hands back like I'm pulling in. The soap suds in your hands. We're gonna bring them under your armpit. And I'm gonna turn my palms up. And then I lift my arms up and roll the Shoulders are gonna come forward because my arms are gonna come forward. The back of the hands touch. Curl the bottom of your hand together. 
Bring the hands back under the arms, washing. Roll the shoulders forward, so washing the wings. The back of the hands come together. Roll the bottom of the hand, come back. Roll forward. Palms up, slide back. Breathe in, and as you do this, feel, you can even tuck your tailbone under to open the spine. Now we're gonna reverse. So offering out, bring the hands to the side. Turn the wrist, roll the shoulders, curl the hands in, bring the palms forward. Roll the thumbs, back of the hands touch. Open the arms out, curl the wrist up, slide under the arms, touching the little finger side of the arm, the fingers and the hands, come forward, open out, roll, I don't know if I did that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thumb comes together, back of the hands touch, part the wings, roll the hands forward. Curl the heel of the hands so the thumbs touch and then the back of the hands part. Curl the wrist up, roll the shoulders. So tuck under so you get that nice openness in your spine. And then bring your hands together. We're just brush down opposite sides of the body. <laughs> you can move your legs. This again helps to change your mood. We're rebalancing the nervous system by crossing the body with our hand, brushing down the opposite side. Remember your skin is an organ. It's gonna be gentle and soft. Good. So we were tapping near the lower back, which is the kidneys, what they call the regulators. There's another move. Again, it can be done in a chair. If you're in a chair, you're just going to be lifting and dropping your heels heavy. Okay, your hands are going to come up and swing down. Again, be careful if you have arms on this chair. Be lifting up and swinging back as you drop the heels down. Come onto the ball of the foot if you can. Drop down. Exhale. Inhale. Drop down. Open your mouth with your exhale. Three more. Good. Whew. That's probably a little bit. We might want to take a break and sit down for a minute. So grab a chair. Pull this one in a little closer. Get the bench just kind of far away. So Let's think about the lung point since we still have Delta variant with us. I know I'm kind of silhouette here. Do what I can. You don't really need to see my face. You need to see what I'm doing with my hands. So that's more important. So we're going to work the lung points. And uh, these points are here on your collarbone. So what you're going to do is you're going to be using any finger that feels right, you could use your thumb or your knuckle if you're, you have arthritis in your hands, just use the thumb joint and rotate. So to find these points, first one, we're gonna slide across your collarbone and where the shoulder hits the bone. Feel that little pocket, That's you know you're in the right spot. So it's about two fingers below the bone. And when you press in, it might feel a little wonky. You've got the right spot, okay? and you can rotate into this point. A few times in both directions, there's no golden rule. Uh, one time, someone asked my teacher, how many times should you do this? He said, nine. They said, why nine? He said, because you want a number. <laughs> Mostly, if it feels more tender on one side than the other, then give it a little more attention. It's sending you a little signal that it could use a little more love. 
Now we'll switch to the other side. And remember, you can come back and do these anytime during the day. There's no negative effect to helping your body improve circulation. So slide across to, your, to the shoulder joint. Roll it forward a little bit, feel that cave. And that's where you rotate into that spot. Next, we're gonna to go to the point in between the two halves. So the lighting's dark here, but I have big bones that stick out. I don't know if you can see. It. Okay, so find the bone, your collarbone, and then slide your thumb to the other end where we were just pressing in. So if you put your two fingers there, or maybe you put your middle finger on the bone in the middle, and then pinch in where the two fingers come together, you're in the middle of the bone, right underneath it. And if you press down, again, it's gonna feel tender. A little weird. You can do both sides at the same time if you want. Again, these are lung points. So in Chinese medicine, they have acupuncture, right? So these would be acupuncture points to stimulate that meridian and a meridian think of it as a large capillary that's a western way of looking at it Now, while we're here, just to keep the pace a little slower while everyone can recover from jumping around that we did earlier, we're gonna do some wrist tapping. So again, these are acupuncture points and you can tap. You can play around with this on your own where you have the top of the wrist against the bottom of the wrist or both together, but we'll start with both of them together. And this tapping again is more acupuncture points. is good for regulating emotion. So if you're an emotional person, not, not that women are, but sometimes we have to deal with other people that are. <laughs> so the tapping is a helpful way of regulating emotion. And then the back side of the wrist, we're just gonna take the hand. So I'm on the top. Did you miss me? And tap, tap, tap. You missed you so much. You missed you. Top of the wrist. What she means. What she's doing. Get that. Okay. So. This can be done. What the day. Really, it's kind of how long you can tolerate it. <laughs> and now, since we've been kind of working in these joints, let's go ahead while we're here and do a little for our hands, since we're already in this area. Okay. Remember, your hands and feet are the ends of your nervous system. So a lot of what we do here is working with the spine and out through the fingertips and toes, because essentially that's the nervous system in our body. So we're gonna start, and again, if you have issues with your joints, you can use the knuckles of your fingers so that it's not as challenging for you. But I'm gonna start right in the center of my palm and rotate your fingers. So I'm just pressing in. I hope that's clear. I have a very large hand, so hopefully. 
<laughs> We're gonna come down to the bottom. and work your way around the bottom on the thumb side. And then you gotta bring in the other fingers, part of the family job here. This whole joint is very large, right? So I'm working the thumb on the back side and the fingers at the bottom here. And a little massage, so I'm rotating, working up toward the knuckle in the webbing. And then we're going to think of each finger as if it were a rectangle. So we're going to do the top and bottom, the little pinch on the end, and then come back down to the bottom and do the sides from the bottom up toward the tip. While we're in the thumb area, let's do a headache point. So if you get headaches, this is a proven point to help with headaches. Take your other thumb and bend it and you're gonna slide it right in the webbing, bend the thumb over, and wherever your thumb touches, that's the point. It can be very tender. If it's painful, you may be one who gets headaches regularly. It's normal for it to not feel nice. <laughs> but if it's really tight and it's painful, this is definitely a point that you can be sitting around watching your Netflix series and rubbing your hand here and helping stimulate circulation into your brain. And while we're here, we're just gonna take a few minutes, rub in there, try to open it up, and then we're gonna translate that rubbing to the bottom of the knuckle. So I kind of come back down with my thumb up toward the bottom of this knuckle and we're gonna go around every finger. So again, think of it as a rectangle. I'm trying to turn my hand to see, it's not silhouette-y. And always a little pinch at the end. back toward the middle. So we always start in the middle. We go up toward the bottom under the knuckle. So if you struggle, maybe you have some arthritis, so feel really good. And remember as our temperature starts to change and we're heading into fall in Oregon, so the heart is most active in the summer and it's the heat is the element. As we go in toward the fall, we have the spleen, which is part of Indian summer. And let's go through. The lungs also become a little more vulnerable in the fall. And we know fall is when we typically get a little more head colds. Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> Go through each finger. <laughs> My index finger wanted a little more attention. Go to the ring finger. <laughs> Pinch at the end. Again, if it's feeling tender, just smile and send it some love, honestly. We have ability to be kind to our body. It's the only one we're ever gonna get. So when you're finished with this hand, you're gonna switch. So we'll start over at the other hand. Maybe you have, again, joint issues in one hand more than the other, just feel free. Remember, the knuckles work just as well. They get in a little deeper, actually. around the bottom. So I'm kind of pinching. Squeeze the end of the finger. Let's 
start at the center of the palm, work up toward the bottom of the knuckle. Massage the sides to the tip. And if you're thinking, wow, that really hurts. Well, then you have to think about all the amazing things your hands have done for you so far. Picked up and carried and cut and cooked and cleaned and brought to you. And always just start down. And again, the point is to bring circulation all the way to the end. Deeper levels of qigong, each uh, finger connects to a different organ in the body. When you're all done, Lace them opposite the way you normally do. Rotate your wrist. And then go in the other direction. <laughs> it's really important to alternate and do things uh, unlike what we normally do so that we break patterns in the body and the brain. So. We're gonna do more with uh, the other limbs and we're gonna do um, some tapping. So our time is flying today. I don't know how. Uh, okay, let's go to tapping. So the next part we're gonna be doing is tapping. And again, you have the ability to change this. If uh, at the beginning of these a year ago, I was remembering over the weekend that I was also telling you if you have a sock filled with mung beans, that's M-U-N-G, or lentils even, any kind of bean, uh, but mung beans are known to pull the heat out of the body. So that's why they use them and they put them in like a tube sock. So like a couple of pounds in a tube sock and then tie it up really tight. And you can use that to tap in the same way that we're gonna be using our fist. And here at the center, we have these little guys, which are made with rough hands. And the whole intention of these is to stimulate circulation in the skin. So, um, but certainly this is done just as frequently these are you know accessories like a yoga mat you really don't need a yoga mat to do yoga but people think they do so turn your head and either using your fist or you can use your fingertips so remember you can keep changing how you're tapping as you move into different areas of your body where you may have an injury or a scar or something so we're just going to use these for fun to see how they work um, I do believe one person here had a little wisp room they found, and that works well for them too. I'm going to go down the arm. Remember, we're thinking of our body as if it were geometric shapes. All the way down the end of your fingertips. So with the hand, you're doing the same. When you get to the elbow and the deep bend, extra smacking in there. Anywhere where you're doing deep bends in the body, it's where extra chi can get stuck. And then when you get to the hands, since we already gave them a massage, see a little tapping there. Rotate your thumb out to get the side of the other arm, other side of the arm. Ooh, can't stop. We always go down and out with our movement. And then the underside. Okay. So I'll just go back and forth so you can see how this also works. And then you're going to take your hand or your tool and lift up your arm. So if you can bend your elbow and do some tapping under the armpit. And we're going to go down the side. The bottom of the rib cage. And then tap with the open hand. 
So I'll just have to get a little bit. The bottom of the ribs. And yes, we're gonna go across the chest. And we're gonna go to the other side. And go down the arm. Again, where there's a deep bend, extra tapping. Roll the thumb out so you get the outside of the arm. And then the underside. Nice. See a wooden spoon in there. That works too. Fantastic. Oh, I see a little uh, bath brush. Great job. Okay, now lifting up the arm. Underneath, go down the side of the ribs. And again, down the front. Again, change how you're tapping. Just match what works for your body. Again, I'm gonna stand so you see what I'm doing. Stay seated as you like. <clears throat> Now I'm gonna go across the front of my body. So underneath the ribs, it's gonna feel a little tender. Normal, because that's where your diaphragm is. So don't feel like, oh, something's wrong, it really hurts. But uh, what you can do is a general engagement with your abdomen, and this is what they call chi tapping. And they literally snap, but you don't have to. Any little bit will help stimulate. I'm going across the front of the abdomen. And we've done our, our hands uh, on the hip bone earlier, so we won't spend as much time there. But now we're going to bend forward. So still, you can be in your chair. I'm just going to show you. And we're going to tap from the middle. So if you're using the stick, a little this way, whatever works. So we go three times. So we go from the middle, inside, middle, outside. So think of it that way. All the way down towards your tailbone. <laughs> and then we're gonna tap the tailbone. So the tailbone is the beginning of your nervous system. And in Thailand, you would see people walking down the street tapping their tailbone. <laughs> we don't do that here, but yeah, maybe we should start. I don't know. Okay, now we're gonna come to the glutes. Okay, you're smacking yourself. And then we're gonna come around. So yes, if you are in a chair, at least best case scenario, uh, I'm just going to hang one leg off the side of the chair so that this is open. I'm going to tap right where there's a deep bend in your leg. This is very important. There's a lot of lymph nodes in here. And when you're sitting, you're getting compressed, right? And you could do both if you want. But focus on one. Double pass. And we're going to go down the front of the leg. And then the side. Inside. All the way down to your ankle. And then tapping your glute again, go right underneath the glute, down the back. And when you get to the back of the knee, oh, you can't see me. Extra tapping. Go all the way to the ankle, and then switch to the other side. So start up at your hip bone, get into the groin, so where the leg bends. That's where you want to do more tapping. And again, if you're on a chair, 
sit sideways and let your head high. So if you work at a desk, you can sit with one leg hanging off of the chair, and that is very beneficial to keep the blood flowing down to your feet. Keep laid up with circulation issues in their feet. We sit too much in our culture. Come all the way down. And then to the outside. And the inside. And the back of the leg. Back of the knee. So I'm going to stand up and do this because you can't see me in this chair. And we're going to rub. So hand underneath the foot, rub the bottom. Go from the heel toward the end of the foot. Like you're scrubbing a pan. So I push out. And then back and forth under the toes. Again, if you were scrubbing a pan, not that you're not a good cook, but accidents happen. And then take your knuckles down through the soft parts. So you could use your thumb, press down and out. <laughs> Pretend I'm sitting. And then quickly use your pinch your fingers, start at each toe, and we're going to massage from the base of the toe to the tip. Squeeze and pinch at the end. Wiggle. Separate each toe, wiggle and pinch. When you've gone through all your toes, thread your fingers through the toes. Like you're holding your hand. Rotate, so if my foot was over my knee, Go in the other direction. And then again, rub. Good. All right, other side. So use your knuckles, rub. So we're going to scrub from the heel toward the foot. We still have time for some swimming driving. Get our hips in there a little more. Scrub, scrub. Rub back and forth under the ball of the foot. You can even pull your toes back to get under the toes. Rubbing. Get a little more vigorous. Go down between the soft spots on the top of the foot toward the toes. And then using your pincher fingers, wiggle. So if I use both hands on each toe, I can wiggle up the top, bottom, and sides at the same time. And give a little pinch at the end. So I'm just moving my fingers back and forth. Go through each toe and then thread your fingers in between the toes. Rotate your ankle. And then massage nice and warm. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Now you're up for it. We're gonna do swimming dragon. We'll do three rounds in each side. So real quick, if you need to stay in your chair, do, it's okay. If you wanna stand, 
will be rotating your hips as well. Now here's how you hold the cup. With the bottom of your fingers at the bottom of the cup. So the cup always stays facing the sky. All right, and we're gonna go up above your head. So first little rotation of the hips. If you're standing up, imagine you're circling a hula hoop. You're in a chair, you're just forward in the chair so that your arms can move and your hips will move too. You're just not gonna be standing up, right? Um, the reason we have the cup is just so you can see, obviously you can practice with water or something for fun outside. Draw one arm back, curl the wrist and roll the shoulder and lift your teacup. Bend your knees as your teacup comes forward. My pelvis is forward, arm goes back. Arms to the side, my hips are to the other side. Palm is forward, my hips are back. Sliding back, roll to open the spine, lift your elbow, bring the arm forward. <laughs> Throw your pelvis under. So I'm gonna be this way so you can see what I'm doing. Draw the elbow back. Curl the wrist, roll the shoulder, bring the arm forward. Yeah, big, lovely breath, that's right. Exhale, inhale, lift, big circle. Now let's go the other side, we'll do three on each side. Just notice that one side will feel different. It's normal, straight back. Curl the wrist, roll your shoulder, lift the elbow. As the hand comes forward, curl the wrist, tuck under your tailbone, keep your knees bent. So as your hand circles over the head and comes forward, draw back, roll, lift up, inhale, exhale. And remember, there are endless free refills of our beverage. So think of this as your beautiful life cycle of energy. It's ever present, never empty. Lift up, rotate, come back. We're gonna do both hands, three rounds on each side. Do what you can, you do not have to have a cup. You just need to have your palms facing up. These are only props. Your arms are gonna cross without touching. So I cross, slide the elbows back, curl the wrists, bring your hands all the way up. Mm -hmm. Roll the shoulders, lift your elbows. So just bend like wings. Bend your knees, tuck under, cross your hands. Circle into the sky. Draw the elbows back. Roll. Great job. Bend the knees. Cross. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Draw back. Curl. Arms forward. Lift into the sky. You got a smile on your face. We're going to reverse. <laughs> Cross over your head, lower your teacup. This is where the wrists are wonky. Slide your arm back, curl the wrist, bring the hands forward, bend the knees, tuck under your tailbone, inhale, exhale, inhale. Last one. Exhale, beautiful job. Good. You come to your heart. <laughs> and now just sitting your teacups and your body down, take a little moment. You know, let's just brush our hands down the front of our body. In case you weren't breathing, not that any of you were holding your breath out there, but you know, yeah. <laughs> So this brushing, again, they call it sending the heat down, water up. 
So the water is the kidneys. And if we brush the heat down, downward, we're sending the heat down to be cooled by the kidney. Just notice as you're doing this brushing, not only is it comforting, but it does have a calming effect. And then let's just bring our palms together so they face each other as we did at the beginning. Close your eyes and with your eyes closed, notice what you're experiencing between the palms. Follow your intuition. Do you want to play with it by squeezing it or petting it, bouncing it? Smile into it. Fake that smile if you don't feel it. Fake it till you make it. That smile is a message for yourselves. Being so grateful that you are living inside of a miracle with all these organs and tissues and bones carrying us forward on a path that we were able to choose with our own mind. And knowing that we have the ability to see and touch and hear, taste and smell all the beauty in the world. Now that happens in the world around us, that place within you is ever present. It's available for you to tap back into, smile into it with grace, knowing that you are perfect. And your body does have the capacity to heal. Gently let your palms touch one another, sealing in that heart meridian, knowing that the qualities of the heart hold compassion and joy and love, which we direct inward for our own healing. So as we cultivate these qualities within ourselves, we're able to send them out into the world and share with others. And that beauty and light within you be there with you throughout today, through your week, and until our paths cross again. It was my honor to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining us here. You can feel free to let Carly or anyone know how this was with the bath lighting because we'll try to reverse it some next week if we need to. So thanks for being here. It was my treat. See you next week or Thanks Thursday so at nine o'clock for yoga. Bye. Love the Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it, it worked fine. At times your face was in silhouette, but we could see what you